Every day that a farmer doesn't get in the field after the 10th of May to plant his corn crop, he can actually lose up to a bushel per acre per day by harvest time. Wayne is honored to receive the Purple Heart, but the one thing on his mind the most are the friends that never came home. We are just thrilled to be with Charlie Daniels right now. We are currently on his bus. And Rascal Flats proved why they are the Academy of Country Music's new vocal group of the year and why they continue to release hit after hit. And for News 5 Live in Grand Island, I'm Ginger Ten Benzel. Ed Nan, back to you. And we're just moments away from the doors opening to the Beach Boy concert in just a few seconds, but with me, I am delighted to say, is Bruce Johnston, one of the members of the Beach Boys, Hello. and Mike Love. That's Thank right. you. That's right. Dr. Love is in the house, yes. This is a dream job for Amanda. She's been wanting to do this since she was two years old. The first time she ever got on a horse. She said to be very careful when you are removing ticks from yourself or your animals. And she suggests using a pair of tweezers instead of your fingers. Not only is this a mystery to the many people involved with this case, including the police and the family, but Bill's best friend for 10 years is baffled by the disappearance. And Jennifer, the next Living History Day will be held on the Fort Kearney State Historical Park on June the 30th. This vehicle is the evolution of maintenance. But when you're going up a steep hill like that one, you probably better hang on. This is a game that tempts hundreds of people <coughs> to come out to Stanford, Nebraska. And they say it's a thrill of a lifetime. People have gathered together at the University of Nebraska at Kearney in celebration, holding hands around the bell tower on the university campus and lifting up prayers of thanks for Anne's safe return. Everybody, at least you know the supports there, and that um, you can always count on them in times of tragedy. And so everyone's been praying real hard, and prayers do come true. So. And that's that's the only thing that makes sense to me is that this was a huge prayer vigil, not a, not just in the Kearney community or across the state, but it was a Midwest thing. It was a regional thing. Um, the people in Montana were looking out for her. Um, all the prayers, you know. Um, <laughs> Prayers do come true. Kearney Police Chief Dan Lynch says he's very relieved that the ordeal is over and he is hoping that this life in this once peaceful Nebraska town can get back to normal. All right now. I feel great. I'm excited. Get Ann back into town and uh, get a certain amount of normalcy back into the community, uh, make people comfortable, uh, get her with her family, uh, be a big improvement for the whole town. So I'm really looking forward to it. Well, I tell you, Chief Lynch actually took time to go and meet Ann Sluty today. He said, I had to meet a young lady with such great determination, and I had to give her a hug. So it was a really exciting day for Police Chief Lynch, as he said. And a lot of the kids in the neighborhood, since today is the day off of school, since it's Friday, right before Easter Sunday, a lot of the kids were there with signs, the homemade signs that they had made saying, Welcome home, Ann. And all the neighborhoods, every house had a sign saying, Welcome home, Ann Sluty. So a lot of people here in Kearney are excited and really have a reason to be. Ed and Ann, back to you. No doubt reflecting the happy mood across the region. Ginger Ten Benzel, thank you very much. Dr. Janice Kudelek with the Grand Island Clinic is seeing strep throat with headaches, stomach aches, and fevers. Croup is also a problem. Symptoms include a hoarse barking cough, swelling in the voice box, a runny nose, and fever. And fevers themselves are an issue. Patients have temperatures higher than 101 degrees and viral respiratory illnesses are going around. Plus, a mumps outbreak at Ohio State University is causing concern. Nationwide, more than 30 cases have been reported in a dozen different states, including Colorado. Kulex says that mumps can be serious because the illness can cause infertility in teenage boys. So check your immunization records. Dr. Michael Johnson with the Hastings Family Practice says he's seeing bronchitis and asthma flare-ups induced by colds and allergies. March is National Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. 90% of the people who suffer from this cancer are 50 and older. Johnson says anyone in that age group or younger with a family history needs to have an up-to-date colonoscopy. For more information, you can go to our website at khastv.com. With what's going around, I'm Ginger Tenbenzel, News 5. On top of the state capitol stands the sower of the seed, reminding us of our rural heritage. In 1981, there were 29 rural legislative districts in the state out of 49. Today, just 15 rural and 9 blended districts. 
Blended is a combination of rural and urban districts. This shift has rural lawmakers asking for help. And people forget that's what pushes the industry in Nebraska, drives the economy, is agriculture. Local farm business owners like Rod Ely are voicing concerns to urban lawmakers. But he's learning it takes time. It's definitely going to take uh, you know three or four times to sit down and talk to him about it. But most of those senators are very busy. Ely's having a harder time being heard because there are fewer senators who understand rural issues, including water concerns, population decline, and economic development in rural Nebraska. As it's very important that we have people that can sell the issues, understand the issues, and present the issue in a positive manner that makes the uh, urban center say, yes, you're right, we'll help you get these bills passed and protect agriculture. Ely's family has been in the grain elevator business in Guide Rock for more than a century. The Nebraska Grain and Feed Association is speaking out for him. Others aren't as lucky. I think as an individual, it's going to be very hard to get to be heard, uh, and it's going to get harder. With, with, with the legislature getting more like more uh, urban and less rural. As an example of decline in rural population, District 49 was in the panhandle 10 years ago. Today, because of redistricting, 49, which is right here in the red, is right outside of Omaha. We have to realize that Omaha brings economic opportunities and Fortune 500 companies to our state and that rural Nebraska is obviously a leading economic driver in our state with agriculture. Number one issue has to be that we, as we're setting in term limits and we're turning over possibility of half our legislators every eight years, that we make sure that we have strong ag representation that is stepping up. Julie Bowen with S&J Detasseling and Webster County UNL Extension Educator. Dewey Linneman are concerned about the possible changes. Linneman says that the proposed child labor rule could be detrimental agriculture. I see this kind of a, as an affront on the traditions of, of our farm life. Linneman feels it could also affect 4-H and FFA kids. It would actually curtail uh, the, the youth under 16 years of age to uh, work with livestock. Julie Bullen says it could affect detasseling in a big way. Uh, they would not be able to perform arduous labor and they would not be able to work in extreme temperatures under the age of 16. S&J employs 2,000 people. 70% of them are under the age of 16. I've had parents who are coming up saying, oh, my kids rely on this money. Both say they are concerned about how this is all being handled. I'm concerned that this is going through the Department of Labor as a rule. There will be no hearings. There's not going to be a bill. This is not a law, so our senators do not have the opportunity to vote. We'll make our way in this world on a solid rock. Our dreams will come true.